the Western Canadian road trip, a big fight, and a big injury. I'm Steve Dangle, and this is another episode of 70 in 7, where we take a look at the Leafs season that was, and still is. We break apart the 70 games they've played so far into 10 game segments, and this is segment 4 games 31 through 40. The last one was uh, eventful. They lost six straight, then fired Mike Babcock, and then went on a bit of a heater. And that heater came to an abrupt end with back-to-back -back losses and back-to-back -back nights against the Flyers and Avalanche. Both losses, by the way, falling on Frederick Anderson, who insisted on playing on both. But they got Mitch Marner back from injury, and Andreas Janssen was out for over a month for the love of... So that brings us to game 31 on the road against the reigning Stanley Cup champion, St. Louis Blues. Not an easy one. Pontus Aberg making his Leafs debut in this one. First period, Zach Hyman on a two-on-one with Mitch Marner. Marner and Hyman, bang! Beats Jordan Bennington, one nothing Leafs. Ivan Barbashev ties it at ones for the Blues, but then Austin Matthews, he was absolutely unreal this season. Scores nice and low on Jordan Bennington, restoring the lead, 2-1. And Pontus Aberg getting an assist on this one, his first point as a Leaf. Leafs on the penalty kill, Pierre Engvall steals it in the neutral zone. He's away with Zach Hyman, who scores his second of the game. This one a shorty, Leafs up 3-1. Then it's the Leafs on the power play, Jason Spezza with a bomb from just inside the point. Jordan Bennington gets yanked as the Leafs have a 4-1 lead. Austin Matthews would score again and they responded to losing back-to-back -back games with a 5-2 win over the reigning Stanley Cup champions. Not bad. Then the beginning of the Western Canadian road trip. This time they start as far west as they could go in Vancouver. Austin Matthews again scores from a beautiful feed from behind the net from John Tavares to make it 1-0 in the second and John Tavares tips in a Cody C point shot to make it a 2-0 Leafs lead after 2. Levo scores for the Canucks to make it 2-1 because of course he did. Oh my god, this looks a lot like the game from the year before where Nick Patan played and Mike Babcock got very sour and the Leafs blew a 2-goal lead against Vancouver and Josh Levo was a part of it. But John Tavares stops the bleeding. He scores his second of the game. He had a great game. 3 points in this one and Frederick Anderson was sharp as well, stopping 38 of 39. Leafs beat the Canucks. He's not going to get an assist on this goal, but he is the reason this goal happened. Travis Dermott with the puck. Zone entry along the half boards. Oh my goodness, he's in the corner. Takes the shot, gets his own rebound, and continues around the net. You want to talk about stuff that the Leafs are doing a lot more since Babcock left? That. Dermot feeds it around. The pass to Justin Hall. There's that Dermatologist pairing. He puts it wide. John Tavares scoops up the rebound. Jakob Markstrom is down and out and Austin Matthews! Game 33 against the Calgary Flames in Calgary. A frustrating one. Mitch Marner feeds John Tavares to make it 1-0. He was was red hot to start the Canadian road trip, but Travis Hamannick scored to make it 1-1 after 1. Mitch Marner gives the Leafs a 2-1 lead. Hooray! Johnny Gaudreau, Michael Froelich, Johnny Gaudreau again score in less than 3 minutes and all of a sudden a game that was tight all night long is blown open to be a 4-2 Flames lead. And it's a shame because it wasted what was otherwise a pretty decent Leafs game. They outshot the Flames 34 to just 24 in this one. Life is about ebbs and flows, ups and downs. Why are you so miserable during lockdown? when you don't even celebrate wins! Since when did I become the face of sanity for this fan base? Game 34, this one against the Oilers in Edmonton. The Leafs had a short-lived third line of Pierre Engvall, Alexander Kerfoot, and Ilya Mikheyev, and they tore the Oilers up in this one. Engvall finds Kerfoot for a one-timer, 1-0 one Leafs after one. Kerfoot finds the puck in a scramble in front of the Oilers' net, gives it to Ilya Mikheyev, who bangs it in and goes like, yes! It was like such an adorable selling. Alex Chason looked downright McDavid-like on a power play to bring the Oilers to within one. But Leafs rookie Dmitro Timoshov decides to go into a one-on-three situation with a line change, uh, going straight at Connor McDavid, of all people, spins off him, finds Frederick Goche flying in in the slot who scores and Dmitro Timoshov schooling Connor McDavid is a thing that Connor McDavid did not take personally and remember at all Ooh, we're, we're gonna get to that later but that gave the Leafs the 3-1 lead in what would eventually be a 4-1 win so two wins in three games on the Western Canadian road trip not bad. Game 35, a home game against the Buffalo Sabres. They're all home games, but this one was in Toronto. Just like against the Oilers, Dimitro Timoshov finds Frederick Gauthier, scores! 1-0 Leafs. Matthews scored a pair of goals in this one, and one of them was the ridiculous 
ridiculous double dangle that you've seen a thousand times over the past few months. Dangles Connor Sherry out of his jock. The goalie, it doesn't even matter who the goalie was. He didn't have a name after this. Matthews beat him and Rasmus Dahlin was behind him trying to be the goalie and he couldn't stop it either. The Leafs are up 3-0. Dahlin would make up for that by getting a power play goal that would make it 3-1. But Dimitro Timoshov on a breakaway? Scores! He's having a heck of a couple games. 4-1 Leafs. Jack Eichel and Kyle Ocposa would score to make it close and a bit of a nail-biter. 4-3, but an empty netter sealed the Leafs' win. 5-3. This is the Leafs team that I wanted to show up. This is the Austin Matthews that I wanted to show up. Jack Eichel, crazy point streak. Buffalo Sabres comfortably in a playoff spot. Make them a little uncomfortable, why don't you? Now we head into a back-to-back -back situation. Can the Leafs, who are nearly half a season in, get a win on the second half of a back-to-back? -back? Well, the first half is on the road against the New York Rangers. And the Leafs dominated them, out shooting the Rangers 40-22. to Pierre Engvall and William Nylander score about two minutes apart, but Brady Shea makes it 2-1. Ryan Strom ties it 2-2 in the first. But, and this happened to Marner a few times this season, he tried to get an and it turned into a goal. Brady Shea batting the puck into the net before John Tavares could get it. 3-2 Leafs. But, once again, Pavel Buchnevich would tie it. 3-3 before the third. But in the third, William Nylander would score his second of the game on the rush, and Mitch Marner would play the role of Thief, stealing the puck in the Rangers zone and scoring 5-3. Add the empty netter. It's a tidy 6-3 win. Now, second half of a back-to-back. -back. But, it's at home, and it's against the Red Wings. Can we get Michael Hutchinson a win? <laughs> and both halves of a back-to-back. -back. Four points, let's go! Hyman on the rush. He's tripped into the net. The net goes off its moorings. There's a penalty called and they review it. Actually, no, it's just straight up a goal. The most Zach Hyman goal ever. Matthews gets a power play goal. Zach Hyman scores again, except this time it was with a shot. A nifty little backhander. Austin Matthews scores again as well. So Hyman and Matthews have a pair and the Leafs are up 4 nothing. But then a costly tussle. Anthony Mantha and Jake Muzzin get into it, and before any real punches can get thrown, Muzzin basically like Ronda Rousey judo slams Mantha to the ice. I said it in my video at the time, I still don't think Muzzin did exactly what he did to Mantha on purpose. I think it was a little bit of momentum and a very unfortunate accident, but Mantha cracked his head and missed a lot of time for the Red Wings. Red Wings get a power play out of it, the Red Wings score on the power play, ruining Michael Hutchinson's shutout, and after the Red Wings scored, Travis Dermott banging his stick on the boards in disgust, and he gets kicked out of the game. And before the game is done, Andreas Athanasiu with a dirty intentional knee on Alexander Kerfoot that just narrowly misses, could have been really bad. Justin Hall jumps in, he gets flipped. It was an ugly end to what should have been a nothing game. And on top of that, Trevor Moore comes back into the lineup. Hooray! Out in his first game back, injured again. Despite all that, Michael Hutchison gets his first win. And now it's okay. There will never be any questions in net ever again. Game 38, December 23rd, 2019, against the Carolina Hurricanes. The next generation game. Victory puppies, boys! Enjoy this treat while I recap the game for you, okay? The Leafs had a 3 nothing lead and I was kind of happy about it and then kind of sad because it happened all against James Reimer. Then the Hurricanes pulled their goalie that early and I knew they were finished. And then, of course, here you go, there's another trade. I didn't think it would last this long. Listen, so the Carolina Hurricanes, they came back and here's the thing. They scored one goal and then two and then three and then four and then five. And then I was really sad. And then the Leafs came back one goal and then Aaron Hall scored and you notice he was talking trash all night. I didn't like any of that. Then Austin Matthews did the most Austin Matthews thing ever and then the Leafs scored again, and then Marner scored again, and then Pierre Engvall with his neck, he got another goal in the empty net, and the Leafs won. Wasn't that amazing? Thank you for listening to that whole thing, Charlie. Alright guys, I'm done. Have a Merry Christmas! Happy New Year! And it starts off cute, doesn't it start off so super cute? It starts with the heartwarming story of Sheldon Keefe putting Jason Spezza in the opening lineup. He's on a line with John Tavares, his kids are watching, all the kids are watching, it's the next generation game, and Jason Spezza scores! It's his fifth of the season, just 30 seconds into the game. My goodness, what if that ends up being the game winner? <laughs> William Nylander with a laser beam on the power play, less than four minutes in, leads her up 2-0. Another power play goal. Carolina not doing themselves any favors, just over five minutes in. John Tavares! James Reimer's night is already done, and I was happy and very upset. Then Carolina takes another penalty, and Brock McGinn scores a shorthanded goal to get Carolina on the board. 
Oh well. Then Martin Nekash gets a power play goal with less than a minute to go in the first, and Carolina is only down one. And what's wild to me is that score actually held until about five minutes to go in the second period. It's wild to me that there was a like near 16 minute stretch with no scoring in this game. Nekash gets another one, and the Leafs cough up a three nothing lead on home ice. Just 20 seconds later, Eric Halla, Hall of Famer, scores to make it 4-3 Carolina. How are the Leafs losing? Andre. Svechnikov scores 44 seconds later. How are the Leafs losing by two? And that's how the Leafs went into the third? Two minutes, 35 seconds in. Austin Matthews scores to bring the Leafs within one because of course he did. Eric Halla, Hall of Famer, again, makes it 6-4. This game's over, man. Until with about nine minutes to play, the shift... The Leafs' best shift of the entire season. That's if you count a shift as someone hitting the ice and then leaving it because this line did not do it for a while, although it only took a minute. Austin Matthews, screaming down the right wing, throws a spinorama move on it, go watch it again, because even Sebastian Ajo's like, what? Mitch Marner's like, what? Drops to his knee, bangs it in. The Leafs are still losing by a goal, but I turned and looked at everyone I was watching the game with and said, the Leafs are winning this game. 53 seconds later, Tyson Berry cheats down low, shoots, scores! The Leafs tie it! Off the very next faceoff, it takes Mitch Marner just six seconds to steal the puck, he walks in, he scores! Seven to six! The Leafs scored three goals in one shift and there were eight minutes left in the game. It's amazing neither team hit 10. Pierre Engvall scores late, eight to six, Leafs win right before Christmas on the Next Generation game. What are the kids like? Goals. And I've already told the story, but I'm gonna tell it again because I like it. That is the day that my wife and I told our family, hey, we're expecting a baby. The beginning of our own Next Generation, if you will. And it was a Merry Christmas. The least style was fun and it was dumb, but the smell of peppermint and shortbread in the air I only noticed the fun. The Leafs' next game after the break on the road in New Jersey against the Devils. Nico Heischer puts the Devils on the board first. Zach Hyman ties it with a power play goal. He's starting to get some power play time. He's hit such a good stretch since returning. Ilya Mikheyev makes it 2-1. Assist from John Tavares and William Nylander because that was a line and it was a good one. Nikita Gutsev and Kasperi Kapanen trade goals. Kyle Palmieri and Jesper Bratt give the Devils the lead. But a John Tavares power play goal sends this game to overtime. And in overtime, William Nylander with a little bit of thievery as the Devils try to exit their own zone. Nylander crashes the net. What? Even John Bartlett on the broadcast thinks that the puck made its way to Kasperi Kapanen and he's the one who ended the game. Actually, William Nylander had the puck and Damon Severson, who's not a Leaf, he's on the New Jersey Devils, knocked it into his own net. And that's how the Leafs won 5-4 in overtime. It's fun, but it's dumb, but it's fun. But this, to me, is one of the most costly wins of the Leafs season. Because in this game, and in a game where he scored a goal, Ilya Mikheyev gets his wrist slashed by a skate. And his season, we thought, was done. Now we know that he's going to be with the Leafs in the return to play, and at practice he looks incredible, and it sounds like he's been in Toronto training this whole time because he's actually been injured the whole time. But Ilya Mikheyev was really starting to hit his stride, and with the Leafs slowly getting some guys back from injury, with Mikheyev getting better at the NHL level, he added something to the Leafs that they needed very badly. Tall, lanky, surprisingly fast for a guy his height, smart, always filling in for the defenseman when they needed it or felt like going for a pinch and he was finding ways to get the puck into the net whether it was with a goal or an assist. Losing him was enormous but can't focus on that now because 16 games into Sheldon Keefe's tenure the Leafs are 12 and 4. So we head into the last game of this block, game 40 against the New York Rangers. Brett Howden makes it 1 nothing for the Rangers, less than two minutes in. Old habits die hard. William Nylander ties it, but Ryan Strom makes it 2 1 and 3 1. He had a great game. Austin Matthews scores, Mika Zibanejad scores. It's 4 2 Rangers. Pierre Engvall, he had a hot little streak too, and he was playing with Mikheyev for a while. Ah, oh, it was so good. He brings the Leafs within one, and with 53 seconds to go, who else? Seriously, who else? Austin Matthews brings the game to overtime. Anthony D'Angelo would end up winning it in overtime for the Rangers, but Austin Matthews steals his team a point yet again. And yes, the Leafs were still fun but dumb, but it was starting to turn to dumb but fun. That concludes this 10-game block, but the Leafs are hitting their stride. They went 
8, 1, and 1 in this 10 game block. Their best block of the entire season. Surely with a new coach at the helm, this party will never end. Well, tune into my next video when the party bus comes to a screeching halt. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know if you liked it. Let me know if there's anything I forgot. Let me know what I could work on for next time. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. Man, they played a lot of games.